video has been brought to you in part by Crunchyroll.com. If you'd like a completely free 30-day trial of unlimited anime streaming of over 15,000 episodes from hundreds of shows with them being updated one hour after airing in Japan on tablets, PCs, and even a load of consoles, then please head to the first line of the description or type in Crunchyroll.com forward slash caddy into your browser to get it right now. Thank you so much and please enjoy the video. <sighs> oh my god. I'm like the Micro Machines guy. Shame he doesn't have an anime. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride on a rug with Michael Bay. Hey, jingle bells, jingle bells, Christmas time is grey. Christmas time is really for you and your enemies burn away. Hey, Legoland, Legoland. Legoland's the game we're talking about today. My Christmas album is now available at no good retailers because it's a load of fucking rubbish. Greetings and salutations, my beautiful people, and welcome to the Kadekura Show, where I always have to do the dirty deed of deciding whether or not a game deserves to be slaughtered or salvaged. Uh, but today, we're not going to be doing the episode right here. I just wanted an excuse to add Christmas in somewhere. Because the game we're talking about today is indeed Legoland. And allow me to say right now that I know it's not too Christmassy, and I've never played this game before. And nor do I intend to. James. Ah, ah, come on, James. Lego games are always in season, and they're fun even if they're bad. So it's a win-win. Even if they suck, you don't really suffer from playing them. But Ian, they aren't exactly Christmassy, are they? I, I can't do it. If you do, maybe I'll sing brick by brick. Oh no, no you wouldn't. Brick by brick. Talk by tick. No matter how thin, no matter how thick, Papa told Mama, and Laura told Nick, You can move a mountain, if you do it brick by brick. Oh, well now I can't say no to that precious little face. Okay. Let's do it! Lego, 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 Lego. Duplo? Bollocks to you, you're not real enough, you fake adopted outcast! Or is it Lego? I dunno, that's what Americans say, you know. Christmas is perfect for a tiny little poem, but I can't write anymore, so hand me my Jeroboam. <laughs> Every single one of you should all know by now that Lego bricks, Lego branded merchandise, and Lego video games exist literally Lego everywhere, and I'd say Lego games themselves have breached putt-putt levels of absurd amounts of sequels and iterations. Yes, even more than when putt-putt and his bastard a tricycle child and Putt Putt gets impounded and crushed came out. But forget all you know about LEGO games for just one moment as we traverse back to April of 1999 when LEGO wasn't quite the juggernaut it is now where Spongebob can be given a bloody playset. Wait, how much does that fucking bus cost? The imaginative, creative and totally bare concept constructive nature of LEGO was still rampant and this face was going to sell you a goddamn PC game. <laughs> The only games out at the time when Legoland released were also more of the bare bones constructive nature. None of this take a franchise and brickify it nonsense. Creator, chess, racers, loco. So vague, so simple, so goddamn good. All of these games in particular I played religiously as a kid on the family home computer, chuggering along with this colossal 32 megabyte RAM bitch. Also played the Sesame Street Letters game quite a lot, but I don't really know why. <laughs> Terrifying. <laughs> So Legoland is in fact a theme park simulation game where you get to pick and decide how to run and build your very own Legoland amusement park, which are awesome by the by. And as it was traditional at the time for Lego games, we get some FMV sequences with lovely characters such as... Ugh, Jonathan Abelbody. Hey JP, that includes you too! And yes, if you live in the UK, you've probably heard this voice before, and that's because this is the voice of Justin Fletcher, better known nowadays as Mr. Fucking Tumble. 
TM. And nothing against the guy, he works damn hard and everything, especially for his age, but that bouncily obnoxious kid pandering and patronizing voice will annoy you in this game since he, like Brenny Smurf in 321 Smurf, narrates everything in this damn game. Whenever you highlight anything in the gameplay, on the menus, in the options, he'll say it, and unless you remove voices entirely from within the park and on the game as a whole, you'll never be rid of it. Empty slot. Build a Lego toy shop. Build a Lego toy shop. Empty slot. Start Legoland game. Greenhouse. So let's begin. Khaki Gomp is my name, and Gomping Cack is my game, I suppose. Whatever the hell that involves. Are you ready to start work? Well, I don't like to say anything negative, but no. Before playing, tutorials would be a wise idea for something as deep as simulation, so let's go. Build a shop, lovely. Then to build a space tower ride. Thank you. Oh my god, who designed this? Jigsaw? Poor guy. So this tutorial is about building rides and shops, easy enough. Should have taken me less than three minutes, but unfortunately the game broke. It asked me to connect a path to the park entrance, but no matter what I did, it either wouldn't let me or didn't register to working. Bad start, Jonathan. Tutorial two, need to add some more plants. You'll need to do this as Bob went a little mad with the hedges. Perfect. I'll just add that to my list of things that don't warrant an exclamation point. The gardeners are stuck behind those hedges. You know, if I had a monster truck for every time I heard that, I'd be a competitive monster truck collector. So instead of firing these assholes for not knowing how hedges work despite being gardeners, we must instead move them ourselves, which I must admit when picking up and moving anybody is great fun. Ooh, boy! Ooh, boy! Ooh, boy! Oh, and so is planting stuff. Setting out your gardeners to work on land in their own time and hearing the sound effect and seeing the thing sprout up is so damn satisfying. So we plant some shit, spend some money, get told how spending money works because I'm an idiot, and then the next tutorial happens. Power stations and bigger rides that for some reason requires that I begin with more gardening. What, what? Just clicking to get some gardeners? Yeah, that's good. Oh, fuck too many. Stop it. No, no, oh my god. Attack of the lawn trimmers. I must say as well though that the erasing and building sound effect is brilliant. It sounds like someone constantly getting decked in the face. We are then rewarded with a cutscene of the professor making a new ride. And there's a spider in here that isn't a Lego spider, raising serious implications about the lore in this game. Is it an actual insect? Is it flesh? In a world entirely made from bricks, is this thing the only physically aging and degrading sack of organs and limbs? Does this mean that the spider is their god? This here is very symbolic, not only because of the size of the spider being godlike, but also from how the gargantuan beast then morphs into a special ride to use in the park, signifying the spider to being the heart of the ride, the heart of Legoland, where Lego folk go to work communicate, recreate, buy their own merchandise of themselves, and therefore the heart of Lego. Deep, spidery shit. Tutorial 4 is all about repairing with mechanics, and how you can speed up repairs but also do it in a more cost-effective manner. And I already screwed up and ran out of money, perfect. But it's fine because this game is very pleasant to look at in the meantime. It's chock full of colour and the Lego theming is wonderful. It matches the graphical style and the huge amount of ride and building variety that not only is reminiscent of actual Lego sets but also real rides and attractions in real Legoland. It makes you feel exactly like a park designer of a Legoland. And to feel that in just the tutorial is very impressive. Tutorial 5 then shows us about maintaining huge rides and planting more flowers, and I thought I was smart in doing this and still having tons of money left over until... Find all the gardeners in the park and put them back in the greenhouse. The game turns into a bloody page of Where's Wally, looking for a dozen randomly wandering green gardeners among green trees and green grass. Why do I always have to ruin this shit for myself? Ooh, greenhouse. Ooh, 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 greenhouse. You know, this bloomin' Jonathan character, he wouldn't be anywhere near as bad if he didn't, well, you know watch you the whole time. Look, it's now not letting me make a circle of water around the water ride to make the water ride go. Brilliant. You have to join it onto something. I know, just let me. You have to join it onto something. I know, shut up. You have to join it onto something. Stop it. You have to join it onto <laughs> And when I mess up on a ride, why can't it blow up and kill everyone? And why can't I customize my own rides as customer death traps? Is it because you don't want Lego to explode all over the floor and risk stepping on it? Because I understand that is the worst kind of pain, but come on, it's a video game, so why can't I go all the way and dismember the people? I can't stand on my monitor and hurt feet. It's also really annoying sometimes when you try to do things, yet the lack of a simple free zoom feature prevents you from seeing more of your immediate surroundings and get a better grip on where the fuck you are in the park. And I never thought this would be a problem, but there are barely any keyboard shortcuts at all, meaning everything you do in this game will get your wrist and clicking finger exhausted within half an hour, particularly with constant precise placement of rides and building of buildings.
first world fucking problems. I mean, the thing is, if I could type my name in at the beginning of the game, which I obviously can't, but still, if I could, a few more keyboard shortcuts wouldn't hurt, you know? Ha ha! Oh, holy shit, mates! All you cutthroat pirates! Oh lord, is he really going to read the whole thing in a pirate voice? Sail on down to the newly opened... Yes, oh, uh, oh, yeah, yes, yes he is. Jonathan Abel body. Most annoying talking plastic of 1999. Shat all over his trousers and painted it on his head. The tutorial soldiers on and lets us muck around for a bit with some newly acquired Wild West attractions where we can now build and gravy jigsaw strikes again. Why would you put this in your theme park? And before anyone says it's just a plastic prop, well, this is a Lego universe, don't forget. So by that logic, imagine going to Disneyland and seeing dead bodies spinning around atop of Thunder Mountain. Oh, wait, they actually did use dead bodies in Pirates of the Caribbean. But hey, I've now beaten the tutorial, meaning I can go into the free play sections. Okay, well before that, let's actually talk more about the game. After the tutorials, you're given missions like Roller Coaster Tycoon, which you can complete to unlock more of the themes to play with. However, I won't lie, the tasks are not very interesting. They're basic as sin, such as build a thing and make this amount of money, so I couldn't be asked to actually complete more than three of the levels. It was too boring, I'm sorry. And I also completely screwed up here because I didn't realise the gardeners worked on a pay-as-you-go basis and I was given this. Gardeners can't afford to plant things. Lazy bullshit. And lo and behold, there was no quit option at all to just go back and try another level. I was stuck and actually had to make another save in order to start the same level again. I mean, fair enough, I shouldn't have been an idiot and spent all my money on wandering gardeners, but still, no back to menu or restart feature is problematic for a kid's game where they often make mistakes. Yes, this is indeed a kid's game, if one couldn't tell. And that means that the lack of undoing mistakes is an issue, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's too simple overall. As you go into free play or missions, everything else becomes apparent. It is simple, yes, but I think perfectly well balanced for kids, perhaps even perfect for their first ever giant park simulation experience. The money amounts for buying and spending are small. The layout is non-intrusive and easy to understand, yet despite the simplicity, the resource management is surprisingly deep. Like any great game like this, it's all about balance, and it's nothing new or that interesting, but teaches what it does in a very straightforward and enjoyable manner. Balancing customer arrivals and retention times by balancing building shops for cash flow, yet paying off that money for bigger and better rides for more customers to arrive and buy more stuff in more shops, that's then needed to repair the rides and maintain the park and keep the customers happy, and working that all around decent gardening and plant and ornament maintenance in order to make the park not only entertaining, but visually visually appealing. It's the basics, but it works really well. It's very solid overall. It's just not the deepest in the world. It's very naked in terms of customization and the amount of stuff to actually think about. And of course, not without its share of big flaws and even bigger flaws. Gardeners can't afford to plant things. Mechanics can't afford to repair things. And so in conclusion, Legoland gets the Slavage. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's really great for a younger audience, but I'd say it was a little bit too basic and annoying for anybody over 10, I'd say, with how it's structured, presented, and, you know, no keyboarding. It's just an okay kids PC game. But hopefully, unlike this game, your Christmas or whatever you celebrate will indeed not be just okay, but a crazily exciting and fantastic one. So yes, if it is Christmas today while you're watching this video, then happy frickin' Christmas to you. And while we're at it, happy frickin' New Year's to you and happy frickin' just holidays. Happy holidays to everybody out there. And please remember to stay beautiful, whatever you frickin' celebrate. Oh, and before I leave you to it, I should say that this game gets so much more fun once you remove all money restrictions and missions. So... <laughs> well, we're starting off with flying colours since I actually have an empty park and yet more customers than I had in the tutorials. And I thought this was only going to be for the missions and the tutorials, but I was wrong. In free play, Jonathan Ablebody is still very much... <laughs> Oh no, where are you going? Come back. And after literally dozens of minutes crafting my dream park, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you my haven. Welcome one and all to Floppy Brick, where dreams come to die. Theme park enthusiasts young and old will love the flop this brick flops as they enter through the main gates right into the magical land of Fount, where a lot of fountains all face the same way, suspended in the entranceway by luscious foliage and trees to remind you that you can never leave. Once you're 
everyone marveling at the amount of fount, you may choose to head left onto Buy Shit Boulevard, where customers can indulge their retail therapies and merchandise addiction with the Lego Toy Shop, the Lego Media Shop, the Lego Clothes Shop, the Lego Toy Shop, the Lego Media Shop, the Lego Clothes Shop, the Lego Toy Shop, the Lego Media Shop, the Lego Clothes Shop, the Lego Toy Shop, the Lego Media Shop, the Lego Clothes Shop, and trees. More trees lining this remarkable street to remind you once again, you can never leave. But oh, what is this in the land of Fount? Why, it's a secret path that only the most dedicated roller coaster fans will care to notice, and a path which leads to many treats and surprises such as the Greenhouse of Shame, where the simpleton gardeners reside to maintain the land of Fount, trapped in a bubble of their own making. They just would not stop planting, it's all they know. And only the greatest theme park goers will care to notice the rides in Floppy Brick, the first lot, located here. Welcome to Spinning Barrel Labs, where naughty subjects, I mean customers, are tortured with various electrical equipment before taking multiple spins on the barrels, barrels of endless, endless doom. doom. And don't think we don't have a place for you today, because we really do, we've got lots of them, we're sick. But that's not all, if you just can't get enough of the festivities like good ol' Dave Mason over here, who isn't happy at all and eating his own tongue, then you can follow him down the path of expanse to the most lucrative area of Floppy Brick. Welcome to Final Destination. If you absolutely refuse to behave, this vast network of space tower rides shall spin you indecently for all eternity, never stopping, never breaking down, never to see your family again. And for that extra bit of security, if one should fall off their rocket, not only would they land in the cacti forest of sin to most assuredly end in their death, but but even if they survive, they'd be too lost to ever see their homes again, with no pathways, no vending machines, and no hope. Well, you know, apart from this path over here, and if you follow it on your way up, please come full circle and stop off to buy some more merchandise, because we can always use a bit more merch money. Why not consider the SpongeBob SquarePants bus? I personally highly recommend it at the low price of nearly 300 fucking dollars! Thank you so much for watching this video everybody, sorry I'm recording this message at about 3 in the morning and everyone is in bed and I don't want to wake anybody up. So if you want to check more random videos from me, please click on the left and right panels, but click on the middle one if you want to get some Kadikaris merchandise from the Yeti, yes, it's out and it's beautiful. And of course, go to the description to see all of my social medias so you can follow me and get updates about when new videos are coming out and all of that stuff. And also you'll find the Crunchyroll stuff that I mentioned in the beginning of the video. So thanks very much if you decide to check it out. And of course, if it's your birthday today watching this video, happy freaking birthday to you. And please remember to stay beautiful. James just stops. It stops sounding like a word after a while. It feels like I'm mispronouncing it almost. James! Can I do something to you? you you're, I'm filming you right now. <laughs> come here. Well, if you're gonna... Well, if you're gonna come there, then you might you might as well be here. Yes. Say so, uh, <laughs> oh. Yeah, you can go. Jesus.